Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography. Happy holidays. And I wanna start this video out with a thank you to everybody that's been uh, watching my videos, uh, coming to my YouTube channel and leaving comments on my videos. I greatly appreciate that. And it's the viewers of my videos and the people leaving comments that have spurred me to do the video I'm gonna be doing today. And that's a comparison. I've done a video on the R5, the Canon R5, and the Canon 100 to 500 RF. And people have asked me, quite a few people, how does this compare without a teleconverter, a 1.4 with a teleconverter, with the 1.4 times teleconverter, to Canon's 600 F11, right? and Canon's 800 F11 lenses made for the RF mount. And of course, it's, it's kind of a valid comparison, really, because when you put a 1.4 times teleconverter on the RF 100 to 500 millimeter, you're at F10 at 700 millimeters, right? So these lenses are static when it comes to the aperture that you can choose. They're F11 that's it. So they're actually fairly close in the uh, speed, the aperture that you can get to the 100 to 500 when you put a 1.4 times teleconverter on it. So they said, how do, how do the lenses compare? Image quality, autofocus, performance, stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to uh, approach today is a comparison of all of these lenses on the Canon R5. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. I am in my, one of my blinds, my little portable blinds this morning. Uh, not for kingfishers this time. I'm trying to uh, photograph an American kestrel coming to a perch, his favorite perch. See how that turns out, right? But anyway, I thought this would be a good time to do the body of a video that I started. And that has to do with um, comparing Canon's RF 800 millimeter and what I have on my camera right now is the 600 millimeter F11 uh, primes, right? And very unique lenses for sure. So I'm actually using the 600s on my camera right now. I've been using the, the uh, 800 as well. And uh, I'll tell you that to start this video, as far as the comparison goes, image quality of these lenses is really really amazing for their price point i mean you're talking under a thousand dollars each one of these lenses and you know they're they're as far as image quality goes and of course as i usually do i'll post images uh, i'll link to some images so you can look at them yourself but i'll tell you i don't see any drop off uh, actually these lenses the f11 RF F11 lenses might actually be a little bit sharper than my 100 to 500 with the uh, 1.4 times teleconverter on it uh, for sure. So really interesting. Uh, and, and like I already alluded to, you're not losing a whole lot more light, right? Speed wise uh, with F11 versus F10 if you put the 1.4 times teleconverter on the 100 to 500. So anyway, uh, pretty impressed actually with these lenses. Now, that being said, there are some definite um, liabilities, I would say, if you're going to shoot these lenses. One, the obvious one being light, right? I mean, you need a lot of light, you would think, to shoot these lenses and get decent images because they're F11, right? And uh, that is true, yes, but I'll post some images that you can look at using the 800 here um, that... I would say the light conditions were very, very, very low, very poor. And shooting birds in flight, uh, diving ospreys, 
things like that. And I'll tell you, paired with the Canon R5, given that you can shoot relatively high uh, F or um, ISOs and still have really good image quality, I was actually able to shoot you know this 800 at f11 in very poor light conditions and get some images that I think are, are pretty darn nice. So you can be the judge as well, like I said, by looking at those images. You'll be able to tell which ones were shot in poor light and which of the images I post were, were shot in, in much better light. But anyway, um, some liabilities of this lens. Well, well, first, I mean, they're small and light, right? You can ha I've been hand-holding these things all day long, and you don't even know they're there, basically. They're so light and relatively small. Uh, this is the 800. Of course, to shoot the lens, you have to uh, open it with this ring right here. It's hard to see, I'm sure, in the blind. But once you open it, you can then extend to the shooting position, right? And then you lock it, and then you can shoot for storage, for carrying with you uh, on trips and things like that in your backpack or whatever, you just collapse it and lock it, right? Which is really cool. Um, that's it, you know. Portability-wise, pretty amazing. The one thing, now, now we can get into the liability here a little bit about this lens. Um, and the 600 is basically the same. So I'll just use the 800 as an example. Your focus limit, you know, your distance limiter here. Full has two settings, full, and then the other one is infinity to 20 meters. Okay, 20 meters. Um, the full and 20 meter, I mean, the, you can't get really close to your subjects with this lens and be able to get focus. You have to be back quite a ways, okay? That's a big difference between the 100 to 500 with the teleconverter even and this lens or the 600 is that your minimum focusing distance is when you do it's a long ways off you know you'd be you're surprised at how far back away from your subject you have to be in order to um in order to get focus so that that's one limitation uh it's got your autofocus um and your manual focus switch whatever stabilizer the 100 to 500 has three modes this just has on and off okay but the stabilizer works well when it's on it really really does so you know it's one of those things where you just have to um, you know think about when you're going to use it and when you're not going to use it um, you, you can't think about panning and all that kind of stuff and going to mode two or you know putting it on mode three or or whatever you just either turn it on or you turn it off Okay, so that's a little bit of a limitation versus the, the 100 to 500. Another limitation, this thing doesn't have a tripod foot, neither does a 600. It just has basically a threaded area to put either a tripod directly on it, a monopod directly on it, or a plate directly on it. It does not have a collar. It doesn't rotate. This, for me, is a huge drawback of these lenses because, you know, sure, they're light and you can handhold them. And if you're just going to handhold them, no big deal, no drawback. But I like to use small tripod heads like the one I have on here on my tripod right now, which is a small Enduro brand. It's a sidekick type mount, right? And if you put this on a sidekick type mount, the camera is in portrait mode, not in landscape mode. So you'd have to shoot everything in portrait. If you put it on a gimbal head, that's a sidekick type. If you put it on a platform type, I call it, you know, the flat one where it goes like this, you're fine, okay? You can shoot it in regular landscape mode like you normally would shoot birds in flight or whatever, but you still can't rotate the camera to level it, okay? So you'd have to have your tripod really, you know, perfectly level and and all that kind of stuff. So this, for me, is a real disadvantage. So you say, well, you've got it on a gimbal head right now, and it's in, you know, the 600 right here, right? I've got it on a gimbal head, and it's in regular uh, landscape orientation. Well, I kind of got around the fact that it didn't have a collar by putting it, putting an L bracket 
on the lens, right? And then bringing it uh, to the to the sidekick part of the of the of the mount, and it it kind of works. Okay, it lets you shoot on a gimbal head with this lens. The problem is one of the big advantages of a gimbal head, right, is that you should be able to balance this so it doesn't flop down like this, right? Well, because this is static. And now I have to, I can move it up and down, but because of the orientation I have to have this in, I can't move it back and forth to balance it. So what you have to do is kind of tighten up the gimbal head so that it doesn't flop. And then if you're going to be shooting actively, you can loosen everything up and you can get all, all axes movement and shoot. And it kind of works, but it's not optimal, right? It's not an optimal scenario. The other thing I really like to use and I've done a video on this, is Wimberley's mono gimbal head uh, on a monopod in a, in a harness so that all the weight is off of your arms and stuff when you shoot, and it's much more mobile than using a monopod or a tripod. But again, it's a sidekick type mount. So again, you're going to have to put like a, a L bracket on the lens in order to use something like this. And again, you won't be able to balance it like you normally should be able to do or want to be able to do. That's why you use a gimbal head, is so you can balance it. Unlike a, a ball head, which flops all over the place, you can't balance it on that either very well. That's why we use gimbal heads for action with these longer lenses, and that's the point, right? These are long lenses. These are not landscape lenses that you're gonna be putting on, um, you know, on a ball head and flopping around and shooting, you know, uh, orientations for, for landscapes and stuff like that. These are 600 and 800 millimeter lenses. So they're meant for wildlife and stuff like that and birds. And so shooting off of tripods and gimbal heads and stuff like that, it's really important. So, you know, that is, I think, the biggest liability that I've found uh, with these lenses is that they don't have a collar that rotates. The, the switch area is built right into where the plate is. So, I mean, it, it doesn't rotate, right? And so that's a big problem, I think, for me. I can get by it, you know, um, by doing this, this uh, L bracket kind of hack, I guess you call it, and it'll work uh, for in a blind like this, shooting kingfishers or kestrels or whatever you're gonna shoot from a blind. But uh, again, I hate not being able to, to balance it, right? This thing flopping down like this, I mean, that's, that's bad. I don't like it. I'm almost might as well shoot a, uh, you know, a ball head or the platform type um, my, um, gimbal head would, would work okay. But you're not gonna get this kind of setup with a platform type gimbal head, right? I love this mono gimbal head. This is what I wanna use. So it doesn't work the greatest for me. But in the end, okay, limitation-wise, um, you know, that's, that's kind of particular to me, but maybe something that other people are going to, to want to consider. Uh, what else about these lenses? As far as autofocus performance, I don't see any drop-off in, in these lenses from the 100 to 500 or my 600 uh, f4. Um, it's an EF lens that I adapt. Really, these lenses do really, really well with autofocus. Almost as good, if not as good, uh, as much more expensive RF uh, lenses and very expensive, my very, you know, 600 type, uh, F4 type uh, EF lenses. So autofocus is really good. Image quality, the most important thing, right, is really, really good. Uh, so overall, given the price point of these lenses, right, under a thousand dollars for a, an 800 millimeter you know less than that i'll put prices up so i get the accurate prices off of uh, off of say adorama or b h or something like that uh I'll, I'll put those in the video but you know well under a thousand dollars for the 600 millimeter um f11 rf lens and you know, if you're going to be traveling, you know, hiking up mountains and stuff like that, and you want to have 800 millimeters, right? You want to have 800 millimeters with you. I mean, this thing weighs nothing and it collapses down, right? To about nothing, you know? So I'll tell you, it's, it's an option given the price point. 
Would I have these as my primary lenses for these types of focal lengths? No, not for me, but someone trying to get into um, this type of photography for the first time where price has always been something that, you know, would get a lot, <laughs> I mean, you start sweating, right? When you look at the prices of some of these, these really long focal lengths, especially something like a 600 F4 or whatever, or 400 2.8 that you're thinking about putting then two times and, and 1.4 times teleconverters on, uh, you start to sweat bullets about spending that kind of money. So to get into this and use it on a, on a, on a system now, the R5, that can focus. F11 used to be a, would be a real problem in, the, in days gone by, right? With autofocus, you'd have one point if it could focus at all, use autofocus at all. Not anymore with, the, with these mirrorless systems, including the Canon R5. It focuses really, really well. So, you know, I don't think there's a whole lot more I need to talk about here other than the fact that, like most things, the best thing to do is go out, get your hand on these lenses if you really think they might be an option for you, and, um, you know, try them out yourself. I mean, you know, what if you want to do a lot of video, right? Well, then F11 and the, you know, the slowness of the lens and stuff like that isn't really a big deal. Right? I mean, you're going to shoot slow shutter speeds anyway. So, you know, if you're a video person, someone that really likes to shoot video, this, these lenses being so light and everything and handheld with stabilization, both in body working with the, with the IS in the lens, I mean, it might be a real option for you. But, you know, get out there and, and get the lenses if you can. Rent them, uh, borrow them from a friend or something like that. Canon was nice enough to send these to me to, to try out. And uh, you know what? I'm probably going to get the 800 for myself. Not so much for stills, but for video. Um, I'll use it for stills. You'll see the image quality of these lenses when you look at the images I post. And for video, I've had a lot of fun with it. I might even post some video, a uh, link to a video or two that I make. So anyway, um, as always, you know, get out there. Try this stuff out, right? Uh, take some pictures. Overall, stay safe. And I'll see you next time.